Hey, welcome back to my channel. This is the part two of the get to know me better this video. In this video, we talk about money, online or business opportunities and everything that will get us out of poverty, right? Get to know the personality behind the channel. And this is the part two of the series. If you haven't watched the previous one, please just go back the video before now and watch that then you come back here to continue. My name is Chiso Mutibe Aka and today I'm going to talk more about my relationships, marriage, parenting and all of those good stuff. <laughs> Alright, so let's start right away. As usual, I have my phone here where I have all the questions to help me. Yeah, so what? Uh, on parenting, okay, um, I'm not sure I mentioned that I was married all the world. So let me start with the fact that yes, I am married and I have four children for now. <laughs> I have four children for now and yeah so let's jump into this video when did you know that you wanted to have children i've always known from when i was a child that i wanted children i wanted mini me's i wanted to see me i wanted to uh, propagate my name okay across generations how did you decide on the number of children to have the truth is the truth is i did not decide on the number of children i wanted but i know that typically growing up we always used to say four children four children you know, but um, I know I also grew up a bit with um, pregnancy experience syndrome. I don't know if that's a thing, but I was always afraid of pregnancy, having men go through it and all that. So mine happened divinely because God loves me. <laughs> mine happened divinely. I actually have four children who I adopted by marriage. Okay, so yeah, so you see how God did it for me? <laughs> All right, so moving on to parenting now, um, more things. What similarities do you see between your children and yourself? Well, I would say that my children, just like every child, children are, are great mimic mimickers. Is there anything like that? So children copy everything that you do. So influencing their life, the fact that they can they copy the things that we do as their parents is very, 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 very amazing because it's something that I see a lot also um, with me and my parents, right? So many things I say today or I do today as a parent, I, I record my mom used to say that, it's crazy guys. I'm like, how did I come about this particular expression? This is exactly how my mom used to say it. So. For me, that's what I can say between similarities, okay, and the fact that we have so many things we look alike. Even my daughter that is fair, my first daughter is fair, but somehow people look at her and say, oh, you guys look alike. So you see, you see, only God could have done it. Okay, um, what aspect of parenting gives you the most joy? Oh my God, just seeing your children thrive, just seeing that they are doing well. Um, just seeing them do well in the academics, in their skill, and also, um, you know, influencing them, purposely teaching them and seeing them imbibe those things. You know, one of the things I have at the core of my mind is to make sure that my children are wise. For their generation, I think that that's one of the biggest skills or human attribute that they need to possess because today's world is, for lack of a better word, is RAS you know so for for your child to be equipped with the right life skills i i am also very always very happy when i see them is a bit those even for my five year old she's so wise and i think i like that it gives me so much joy as a parent yeah oh what aspect of parenting gives you the most stress <laughs> oh my god i have had to cry kneel down and beg my children almost leave the marriage because of this kind of stress. I know what I'm talking about. I think it's mostly um, having to repeatedly, it's not easy to raise children, to repeatedly tell children, oh, don't do this, do this this way, don't do that, don't do this. You know, that repetitive teaching and disciplining that seems like it never ends. Yeah, and teaching them also this basic this same thing i think the same thing that gives me the most stress is the most thing that gives me the most joy you know on the flip side you know really just getting to keep saying you keep talking you can't have a leave as a parent say so let me just stay on my own today i'm not talking to you but things will spoil like they will practically spoil so you have to keep talking you keep it or do that you know be hygienic or blah 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 right i think that's it um how have you grown as a parent a lot a lot guys um 
moving from straight from single to wife and mom of four, you can tell like I have grown in patience, I have grown in resilience, I have grown in managing, managing resources, I have grown guys, I have grown in um, executing or what I say, um, teaching from my well of knowledge, uh, I have grown the guys. Well, I have known myself even better, you know, because of parenting. What is your parenting philosophy? I and my husband actually shared this. Our parenting philosophy is to raise independent children. Independence meaning independence in the sense of children who know what to do at every stage that life presents itself, right? Yeah, that's my parenting philosophy. And I also, because of that, I also believe that there is nothing like in the future I want to be this. I know that as a professional like a doctor, lawyer, you need certification to be that thing in future. Aside that, we don't encourage our children to say I want to be this, I want to make money when I grow up. You can make money now, even as a three year old, even as a newborn, a newborn can make money. You just have to, you just have to be intentional as a parent. Yeah, that's our philosophy. What has parenting taught me about myself? Hmm, that taught me that um, everything I went through was valid. Everything I was learning as a single woman in her late 30s, in my early 30s, in my 20s and teens were for a season like this, yeah. yeah. I have also learned that I have so much capacity, much more than I thought I was willing to handle. And that's the fact that I can love, love beyond myself. <laughs> yeah, so moving on to questions on relationship. What relationships in my life are the most meaningful? Um, I would say my family, my parents, my siblings, yeah, um, apart from my my own family, which is my, my husband and my children, yeah, I would say that. Who in your life knows the most secrets about you? Who in my life knows the most secrets about me? Oh, my husband, yeah, my husband. How open are you to making new friends? I'm very, very, very open to making new friends. Well, incidentally, I've not been having new friends recently and it bothers me. <laughs> okay. Um, are you more extroverted or introverted? I am introverted. Or uh, sometimes I can be an ambivalent, depending. I can I can stand up to the occasion and do what I have to do. I don't allow my introverted self to you know, make me lose opportunities, if you know what I mean, yeah. But I'm introverted and I love it. I'm very introspective, I'm a thinker. Uh, yes, I'm a thinker. Who have also mastered her doing part and how to go about it. Um, which friend have you had the longest relationship with? Which friend have I had the longest relationship with? Um, I would say currently, somebody who is still my friend now, I would say in Kechiwakama, we have known since we were, since I was four years old or younger. Yeah, and because we lived in the same compound, we went to the same primary school, and we still relate to you now. Yeah, I would say she's the one. In case you shout out to you if you're watching this video. <laughs> okay. Um, when you make social plans, who do you hang out with the most? When I make social plans, well, my husband, I'm always everywhere with my husband. About my family here which family member are you closest to <laughs> which family member am i closest to okay apart from immediate family my own family i'll say my younger sister i'm closest to my younger sister she's the one that that practically knows you know we can week out a bit of what is a, what's happening with me and my family yeah and she's the person i run to for advice for help for stuff and the same thing with herself as well how close are you with your parents? <laughs> I am very close to my dad. We are, we are kind of close. We are kind of a close-knit family. But I have a special kind of dad. I have a dad who still calls me every morning, first thing in the morning, to check up how we are doing. Doesn't ask for anything. Only just wants to ask, are you happy? Are you eating? Are the children okay? I mean, he does this every other morning, guys. Actually, now I feel a bit guilty because I saw his missed calls. I was out running around earlier in the day, um, around 8 a.m., and I saw his missed calls. When I missed his calls when I wasn't uh, on my phone, he called me twice, and I haven't returned that call. And my husband has asked me to return that call, and I have not. So, Daddy, I love you. I'll call you in a bit if you're watching this video. <laughs> 
Yeah, my daddy, and that's the way he is with all his children, by the way. My daddy is a daddy and a mother in one. I'm also close to my mom a bit, but we don't talk as much as often as my dad at all, not at all, at all. Yeah. Okay. How has your relationship with your parents changed over the years? Oh my God, huge. Especially this is my dad in particular. We grew up in a very religious background, conservative in every point, very annoying, conservative in that sense. My father used to be very, very, very strict. He used to flog me a lot as a child. And at the point I'm like, why am I always the one receiving punishment for everybody? You know, the burden of the firstborn. If you're a firstborn, you know what I'm talking about. You, yours may not be as bad as mine, or yours might be worse than mine. Because I've seen people who, who, who theirs was like worse than mine, you know. I hurt you guys, I hurt you, you know. But anyway, my dad became more understanding, deliberately became closer with us, stopped all the flogging, started reasoning with us. At about when we were in the university, um, there about, and then he had perfected it as we became adults, you know. Especially since I left home to be on myself, my father has also grown. He has been able to, to, to understand that my children are grown, so there are certain things you shouldn't be overly tense than you know, trying to control yeah so i think it has grown as we do our parents have grown as well and now they know the best not to put their religious uh, beliefs on us as well yeah what relatives had the had biggest impact on your growing up oh my god i had such a great growing up with my relatives my aunties from my mom's side we are very, you know, hands-on. I remember my mom's elder sister was the reason we all went to federal government colleges. She always made opportunities open for us. Thank you, Auntie Grace, if you get to watch this video. She was so mindful about our education. Um, you know, and my other aunties, I remember an auntie of mine, Auntie Joy, who would always want to pray for me, get us to do some religious activities, you know, when I was single and mature, and you know, just because she was concerned. Yeah, they were always in our lives. They would also even come to my hometown at that time. You know, they loved their in-laws, my father, a lot. Yeah, then on my dad's side, we practically grew up with my paternal aunties. If I most of them got married off of my our house when we were children, my father was like their father, but their father died, you know, you know, in, in 1980. So my father became like that de facto father. And they always have been um, hands on till date. I have a big cousin of mine who practically is a family go-to person. He's, she's very hands-on. And Tony, shout out to you if you're watching this video. I am super, super grateful for all that you do and still do. Yeah, so yes, I have relatives who are very hands-on with me growing up. Yeah. Then finally, this part of the questions is asking about my habits. What are, your, what are my most productive habits? Um, I waking up early. I didn't used to be a, an early riser as a as a single woman, but since getting married and having children, my God, I wake up early. I'm the family's alarm. I wake up early to wake every other person up to make sure meals are ready to make sure that nobody goes late to school. That's one. Number two, I also read a lot. I read, read, read a lot. I watch a lot of you know self development videos. That's one. Secondly, um, thirdly. I make sure I eat breakfast every day. I make sure I pray on the go. I pray without season actually. Um, I have conversations with God. I'm not religious really about prayer at all. Um, productive. I get to do my video like I want to. Yeah, when I when I set out to do that. Okay. What inspired? What inspired a significant change in my life? I would say moving cities. When I moved. Um, when I was 27, I moved to Abuja. Abuja is the capital of Nigeria, by the way. It changed my paradigm about, about everything I knew about entrepreneurship, people, social life, everything, helping my accent. I, should, I would have been saying things like research, research, <laughs> because I'm evil, I'm proud. But moving to Abuja you know, in a city that had not just evil people, had like everybody in the world. There are Americans there, there are every state in Nigeria I represented them. You know, it helped me with my accent and the way I presented myself. It helped me discover myself. It helped me understand business. 
Abuja is, is the city of my success story. I can go on and on about it. Abuja was the reason I discovered that I could blog. Abuja was the reason I made great friends. Abuja was the reason I became quite popular. I was, you know, I used to be a mini celebrity, you know. Um, my former name, my former brand name was Jenny Chiso. You can still Google it. I was de facto, you know, community organizer with blogging and bloggers around the FCT at least between 2004 till 2019 or 2018 there about yeah, I had fun doing all of that. So I would say, yes, that was one thing. If I didn't go to Abuja and discover myself living home, I'm not sure I would have where I am today. Okay? What do you wish you did better? I wish I understood how to make money earlier, like when I was a teen. I wish I did what better with business management, you know, understanding profits. And that's why I'm doing this channel right now. Okay? Sharing all that I've learned on this journey of making money, entrepreneurship and all how important is exercise for you very important but it's one of the things i hardly hardly do i'm so lazy it's crazy guys anyway i'll do a third part of this video just to let you know more about me and then until i bring that make sure you hit the like button and click the subscribe button because we're talking money here and opportunities and everything i've learned in the last 13 years and um, yeah it's gonna be fun i'm gonna bring the next episode about more things about me my education and all my trainings and all of those good stuff all right bye